the escapes other teams have had as they played them there. Um, I think, you know, look at what was learned and in, in, in what we experienced. We, we didn't play great in the second half, obviously, but we also won the game. And that's good. Now, what did we learn from that? We learned that hanging in there and not folding your tent is important. You know, we did not. They took it to us uh, with their defensive front um, against our offense. And, you know, all we needed to do was probably get a couple more first downs and that thing's over. We didn't do that. Why didn't we do that? Well, we jumped off sides, OK? We had an uncharacteristic penalty, which we retaliated on something that cost us dearly, um, uh, you know, on a, on a personal foul, which, you know, I tell our guys, uh, the guy who gets caught is always the second guy. I mean, that's nature of the beast. And we, you know, didn't do that. Uh, we allowed their punter to affect field position and give them credit. That, I mean, that scheme, we never, we only, we fair caught one. And uh, guys, we lost uh, a total of 68 yards in hidden yardage by the ball bouncing on the ground and pushing us back, okay? Those are things that don't show up yet are very critical. So this was the first real game we've lost in special teams. We've lost the special teams. Our kickoff coverage was horrible. Um, and the hidden yardage therein, we didn't make up with our kickoff return. You know, we, our punt, you know, we punted way too many times. But, you know, our average, I thought punt guy did a decent job and, and we got it covered. And, um, but I thought we lost the special teams, which that yardage is very important. Now, all that being said, in, um, this was the first time we figured out how to win those kind of games. And that's a positive. I mean, it really is. And uh, our guys were embarrassed afterwards from the standpoint of how they played in the second half. All right? And uh, that is a good sign. All right? But we also got to understand we've got to feel good about the win. And we've got to feel good about uh, how we won. We won ugly. I'm not sure you could say that around here for a while, you know, and uh, and we should feel good about that because when you start to develop a program and you start to de develop um, what your team's all about, you've got to go through those learn those teachable moments that sometimes, guys, it's not going to be perfect, but figure out a way to finish it, and we did, and uh, I feel really good about that. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, our guys didn't use the travel as an excuse. I think the end of the game was who knows what time it was, our time from a body clock standpoint. Well, it was 130 a.m. Uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, there, there, there are some good things out of that. And uh, I thought we handled the trip well. Um, and, you know what? It was good. Now, what do we glean from it? Okay. Um, the understanding of uh, we control what we allow to happen. And what I mean by that is they, they took it to us up front, and we didn't do anything to control that. Um, you know, we gave up some big plays. I mean, that's a story of the season. But at the same time, I don't think we let it affect us in a true negative way. And uh, you know what? We competed to the, to the end. And, and as it turned out, uh, we got the win. So uh, what do we learn from that moving forward is, guys, we're making huge strides as a program uh, when it comes to, to, to the tangible results. And now, as we move forward to this game, um, it's going to be a different time. You know, we've been playing at home in the afternoons. Now we're playing at night. Uh, we're playing, obviously, the, you know, a team that, yeah, they've had a couple losses. But guys, they've, they've lost some pretty good ball squads. 
and uh, and uh, you know a team that is a perennial champion and, and knows how to win and knows how to take care of business and are going to come in here after their coach has had an opportunity to get all over them to prove a point. Okay, so there's even more motivation for them moving forward uh, to come in here and, and just knock the heck out of us. Um, now, how do we how do we approach that? I think is re really the important thing is, and and you know, if you were just to look at it, I think they've beaten us the last two years, 638 to four or something like that. I mean, it wasn't even close, right? Year before I got here, it was 100 to nothing, and last year was 200 to nothing. I don't know. I mean, it was that bad. Okay, so let's face facts, right? So if you're a guy that's been involved in that, you show up and say, God, not this again. You know, I mean, you know what happens when you get taken outside, backside of the woodshed is your dad's gonna beat the heck out of you, right? So now we gotta play this team in blue that is gonna come and take us outside the woodshed because they did before. Okay, guys, so we, let's face it, we lost this game. Okay, let's move to the next. Who do we play next? Who do we play after Boise? Nevada. Nevada. Okay, let's talk about Nevada. All right? Is it Nevada or is it Reno? Reno, right? Reno. It's Reno. UNR, right? But they call Big Sky Conference team. But they call themselves. So here, here that, that to me is the question. So do we show up? Because, you know, based on history, we, we don't belong on the field with these guys, okay? So let's talk about the next opponent. In fact, I think we're upstairs actually getting ready for Reno right now because this one's already lost. It's interesting because, guys, this isn't the same team that showed up the last two years. This is a team that, that our team, meaning, you know what, they're different. They care about each other. They understand what it means to go compete. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to go win the game, but it really shouldn't matter. It should be about how we're going to win practice this week. It should be about how we're going to win each play. That's the mindset. And, and, guys, it has nothing to do with the opponent. It has all to do with what we can control, and that's us. We can't control what kind of pressures they're going to run. We can't control what kind of trick plays they're going to run. We, that, we, we can't control that. That's what they do. But we can control our mindset as to how we're going to prepare, our mindset as to how we're going to work given what we have game plan-wise and how we're going to execute it and the emotion that we're going to play with. I was kind of, I felt good in this last game the way we kind of came out with the right mindset and how we hung on, to be honest. I'm okay with that. And uh, that's part of developing. Now, the next step is, are you satisfied? Are you going to be scared? The big monster's coming in here, and they're going to take you outside the woodshed and make it 400 to nothing, right? There's the question. We'll find out. We'll find out at practice. That's where you find out. Did you talk uh, from this last game, uh, your, kid, your guys were embarrassed about the way you played in the second half, but do you think you made strides in being more resilient, uh, playing the play, forgetting the next play, going to the next, not letting things add up to where you would have lost that game in the past? Yeah, held and, and I never got the feeling even, you know, from an emotional s on the sideline, like it was, oh, here, here it goes again. You know, and I, I didn't ever get that. And I don't think anybody in the stadium got that, to be honest with you. Give them credit. I mean, they played their tails off now. And they seem to get stronger as, as, as it went on. Um, now, that, that's a credit to them. But when you go back and evaluate the film and we look at it, you know, was it something they did or was it something we did? Yeah, but did you, did you feel like you were more resilient? No doubt. Let things add up to a, 
There is no doubt about it. And I thought we got pressure when we needed it. You know, we caused them some issues. We made some plays in, in, in pass coverage uh, because of that. And uh, we created some turnovers um, that, you know what, were huge. Uh, you know, DeAndre's interception, obviously, Max, you know, fumble recovery, uh, KPL's uh, interception, anytime you can do that, you know, creating turnovers. Now, we shot ourselves in the foot, obviously, with, with the interception. Um, and, you know, the big returns, which are like, th those are game changers. You know, anytime they can drastically alter field position, that's where our special teams let down. And I'm disappointed in that. Now, we had some new bodies in there a little bit. That's not an excuse. Uh, they've got to pick up the flag and go. How do you approach? Because when you look at the way Hardy was kicking, um, some of them are low, some of them. Is there any way that you can set up your return differently well, to stop that? Here, we, we did that, when you think about it, in the game before, because they were a rugby team. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have a threat that a guy that could go run with it. <laughs> you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. Um, so we had two guys back. And, and I think I commented on what I thought we did from a punt return standpoint really helped us in that last game. This game, we had to take that guy out of the equation because of what this guy can do from a, OK, it's fourth and six, and he just goes and runs it. Right? right? We had to force him to kick. Do you have a shadow on him? We did, okay. yeah. Um, so, you know, give that credit to them. I mean, they understood what they have in a good weapon back there, and, okay. and we didn't do a good job of answering it. Jim, what does it mean to just be playing in Boise State, premier program probably in the conference, most people would say, yeah. in November with so much at stake for your team and their team? It's not just them anymore and your chance to be a spoiler. You guys have a lot at stake as well. No, I, I think we do. and and. Uh, you know that's an exciting thing. I think that's part of the growth of a, of a you know of a program. That that's those are the steps in building the foundations that need to be there. The relevance of games as games become later, right? Um, that that that's a good thing. I mean that that's a good feeling. That's a good thing to learn from as we move forward. Um, and you know my really my question. I'll be straight up. My, my question is, are our guys scared of this opponent because of the history? OK? Uh, you know, they're going to have obviously come in here with a whole different resolve than they would have if they were coming off a big win against BYU. OK? They're going to, you know, this is exactly from a coach standpoint when you're in Coach Peterson's shoes, all right, because he definitely has their attention this week in practice, correct? Yeah. So now all those little things that were happening are now a focus. So now they come in here saying, uh, now we ain't letting these guys, you understand what I mean? So, I mean, he's sitting over there licking his chops. <laughs> I got this right where I needed it from a conference game standpoint. And they're still saying, you know, hey, we get this one, now boom, we move forward and we go win our side and then go beat Fresno in a rematch, right? Do you think the way that your team performed against Alabama, though, has an influence on how they're looking at this game? Because if they could go out and, you know, in Alabama and do what they did, yeah. and then we have it at home, it helps them I think capturing that mental intens intensity and, and energy and focus is something that, that you have to go say, We've done this, okay, now. Will we, you know, where that deal, man, you're, you know, you're playing in front of 102, Brian Denny Stadium, number one team in the country, national television. I mean, there's a lot of those things that come into it that says, you know, boy, I got a chance here to really, right? Um, now, this is an opponent that they should be familiar with, right, that has beat them. 528 to three the last two years, right? Is that something? I don't know. It, it's, I mean, I, it, after, let's put it this way. They, it, I think both scoreboards, I think here, the opponent side and there, the home side, 
the, the electrical company saw a surge in power that day, right? So, um, I, 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 I definitely, you know, I'm excited for it. I think it's great. Do I think it's great for Fort Collins and Colorado State that we've got an opponent coming in here in November, okay, with a lot on the line, okay? That's cool, right? But now, will our guys, when we get to the edge of the tunnel, turn around and go back because they don't want to go into that woodshed, right? I, I, that's, that's the question I have. And you're going against an opponent that from a coaching standpoint on the other side, you kind of like, because you know, your motivation and the attention you're going to get from him at practice that week, you know, he's laughing at me right now. That's a good question. Yeah, he's, uh, he actually came back in a boot, OK? okay? Um, injuries while we're there, why don't we do that? Ta -ta -ta, right? It's a good segue right there, OK? Um, I have not seen him today. Now, obviously, he's been in the training room. And as of the training report, he's going to stay in the boot, but he will practice. Now, guys, we're a little bit different because of the travel. We're not practicing tonight. We're not meeting until 6 o'clock tonight. Okay, so I won't know anything until we get going there. Terry didn't seem to be really that nervous about it. Practice is tolerated in this particular report. So until we find out, I know he was there this morning getting treatment, um, we'll find out. But uh, he obviously, Ankle posterior, posterior tibialis strain. High ankle strip. I guess high ankle. It hurts, right? Yeah, it's somewhere. Okay. Uh, we had one no here. Morton's neuroma. Have you ever heard of that one? Brandon Haynes, who didn't play in the fourth quarter, basically. We put Moose in. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. He's got a sore foot, all right? OK, layman's terms. So where he's at, he again, it, it says here he's not out, but he will practice. It's what he can handle, right? Your safety is also on that last, on the Hail Mary, the end of the game. It seemed like you had two of them collide, and they both yeah. kind of moved off, at least from the TV. Only got a quick, are they OK? Yeah, they're fine. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they were exhausted, Yeah. OK? Uh, both the safeties took 94 reps, not counting special teams. Januska, how's he? Januska is, is, he's not good. I mean, he's that was a, that was a, that was a very good hit. Yeah. Clean hit, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm not, it was, letter of the law, it was really good. Yeah, and uh, he took a pop, and so he'll probably be out, which will hurt us. Uh, you know, special teams wise, especially because he was taking a lot of valuable reps there. Um, so depth wise, and we were Shaq played about nine, nine plays, I think. Uh, so he should be back though, and and so that'll yeah absorb some of that. So, um, but other than that, guys, uh, Nuvali, uh, Papito, he actually tweaked his uh, leg a little bit in Thursday's practice was unable to go on Saturday. And looks like he, we're going to probably be missing him again this week. OK, so depth at linebacker there. Now Peralta's back, right? So that helps us. Clyburn's back. So, uh, but where it really hurts us, and, and we saw, was on special teams. Um, and then uh, Really, that's uh, that's about it. Shaq Barrett made it through the game. We need to get him back in condition because of his lack of reps and him missing Monday's practices, which are, you know, heavy conditioning. Uh, I really feel that he, you know, he was he was tired in that game. Uh, he made some splash plays. Don't get me wrong, but his consistency and performance was not where I think it needs to be for us to be successful. And he needs to take it upon himself to get himself in shape 
which means some extra stuff in the pool and that kind of thing just from a cardiovascular standpoint. Uh, we've let that go. Um, Crockett and uh, Weston actually uh, must some ate some bad pineapple or something because they were ill um, during the game. We had to IV them at halftime. And their performance, I think, showed that a little bit. But they're they're fine to practice. I mean, it's not, you know. But other than that, guys, we're in for this time of year. Think about it. We're 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 actually in pretty good shape. Better shape than when on yeah. uh, Barrett. Is it just he doesn't practice Monday? It's just a class conflict. Class conflict on Monday, right. and then you know because of the injury. Injury. He hadn't been having the day. normal reps that you get yourself during the pace that we practice at. You know, which is kind of conditioning, you know, um, as well as as, as practice. Uh, he's just not getting that. Do you lose a day of practice in this week, technically? Technically, we do. We'll still do something tonight, but it'll be very limited in what we do. Yeah, and it'll be late. It'll be later. Obviously, if you're not so good. Yeah, and and the thought process there is to get them back, time change, um, and not have an excuse. Oh, I'm tired, right? So, segue with from Barrett, one of the premier defensive players on this conference. You also are going to face one of them this weekend in Justin yeah. Lawrence. Yeah. You talked a little bit about you know Keith Swart when you played him as a linebacker and how disruptive he could be. Is Lawrence even more disruptive considering what he's done this year in terms of pass rush? And and going against uh, yeah our our you know. We gave and and looking guys, we we gave up some things this this week, you know, in the second half of that game, which was our strength, you know, and and uh, and that's disappointing. Now their strength, you know, we've got to step back up. We can't let this guy disrupt and create negative plays and disrupt what we're doing. Now we also need to know where he's at, if that makes sense. So from a game plan standpoint. It, 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 you get into this. It's it's kind of interesting uh, when you're game planning. It's like when you're in, when you're in the SEC or in the NFL. A lot of times your game plan really is around who is the disruptive factors on the other side. Mm -hmm. I think these guys did a great job of knowing where Shaq uh, Barrett was in this game, and you know they were setting their back. You know, on, and I don't know if you noticed that, but every shift. And, and it was to gain an extra hitter most of the time on where Shaq was. Well, that helped Corey, I think, a little bit. Yeah. He hit it on the head. So um, knowing that, we've got to know where he's at at all times. Do they move him around a lot, or is this going to be someone that Barrett it, is going to see, Barrett, yeah, going to see all day? I think he'll see most of him. Yeah. Uh, there has been some, but basically he's a guy who's got to step up his game and, and accept the challenge. Is he a guy, though, that's disruptive enough that changes your pattern of maybe what you sometimes like to do because Jared might need more help? Yeah, absolutely. We're, do you we've, feel good about Jared with him one-on-one? -on -one? First of all, I feel good about Jared accepting the challenge. And yet, at the same time, you know, you got to understand limitations. And, and look, don't let their strength become the true positive in the game. So we're going to have to do some things um, structurally to make sure we know where he's at. And then there's certain plays that maybe takes you out of. But what do you what do you like best about the way you've seen him on film? What does he do so good? That Active, he's so good? relentless, the way the game's supposed to be played. You know, from that, he, he's a guy. It's just it's not a take no for an answer. Yeah. You know, and and. Just as a coach, watching film, I mean, you hear me talk about different guys. I like watching guys like that. I mean, I don't like playing against them. Right. But, but you appreciate it as a coach when you see that kind of relentless pursuit of excellence. I, I like that because I think that's the way the game should be played. Has Barrett kind of developed into that? He has. Uh, however, I say that I'm disappointed in his conditioning. Now, he's come up big, don't get me wrong, and he's out there working, but that's our responsibility to get him where, you know, he went, how many plays are there in a couple of those games? I mean, he was he was up in the 90s playing, you know, where 
you could see in this game in particular, especially because of the pass rush, the humidity probably had something to do with it, you know, a, a different type of conditioning, right? Um, where he was two plays were pretty good. That third one now was not typical of his relentless pursuit of, of what it's all about. When he is in condition, has been. Mm -hmm. Well, but I would say his uh, his study of how they try to block him and then attacking the way the set of, of the defender is or the, the offensive tackle, say, I think he's done a really good job from the preparation part, if that makes sense, in how do I get there. You know, he's become much better with his hands countering the, the – the offensive player's hands, and I think that's been, and not given much body when he does rip for them to get a hold of him. So, well, knowing the way you'd like to work your backs, you know, from where you were before, judging from Capri's workload, have you settled in on he's your, he's your guy right now? Well, I think uh, he's, he's probably, from a production standpoint, mm -hmm. he's probably earned that, you know. Um, and uh, so he'll get a little more. I think Donnell did some really good things in this last game. Again, um, and being able to spell him. Uh, Chris got about, what, four carries, I think it was. And, uh, and that's not to say Chris is anything's wrong there. Um, you know, right now, based on production uh, of those touches, um, you know, Capri is doing a pretty decent job. Can you see? directly about his growth this year? He started as maybe your third or fourth back. He, you know what he's done? He, here's his growth. His growth is he's grown up. I'm talking about growing up as a person and, and understanding the importance of all the little things that, that uh, it takes to be good on the field. A lot of those things off the field need to be taken care of as well. I'm not saying he's a malicious or a bad guy. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying understanding the importance of simple things like being on time. Think about, think about not being on time. Would you get fired? Mm -hmm. Right? In, in real life, yeah. correct? Well, th those are little things. And then understanding it isn't about excuses because at the end of the day, no matter what anyone says, we're all responsible for our own self-determination. All right? So take it upon yourself. Don't blame it on somebody else. And he's grown in that. Is it he's learning these things, or do you still like me to, to learn them a little bit more? Oh, I'd love him to learn it a little bit more. Yeah, he, he's, he's gotten much better. Mm -hmm. And he'll be the first to tell you, you know, when normally he might have had an excuse, he may stop himself and say, yeah, it was me. At what point of the season did you see him go from being high school back who could just take the handoff and go wherever the heck he wanted to and make positive yards to the guy that was going to fit his steps with the offensive line, make sure everything was in sync? When did you start to see that growth and how much better is he at it now? Well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, each, each, each player is responsible for his playing time. Mm -hmm. Coach isn't. And once you kind of discover it's, it's my responsibility, then, and, and where did I see it? You could see it continually happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not there yet, don't get me wrong. He's got a long ways to go. But his upside's pretty darn good well, now. When did you see that start, that click for him that there are things that I have to do? I have to follow. I mean, they seem. You know, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure. And, and that's, you know, I, I, it's been an evolution. I, I don't think that it just clicked. You, you know, I just see a consistency in performance, consistency in your day-to-day -day life, how you handle the things around you and, and what it is. He's, he's become more consistent, and, and it's just it's continuing to go. When, you, when I looked at the 13-yard run, Mm -hmm. uh, go right, cut back left, juke another guy. 
that play, is that what he really is, what he can do for you? He's got you know, the escapability, the breakaway ability. I mean, he can show at times he can run through some tackles. Well, and he's got patience. It, it, there, you know, when do you hang on that guy's hip and not just outrun that hip? You understand? I'm talking about the blocker, right? Right. He, he, he's got that. Now, I'm not sure you teach that. He's got that. And, and uh, you know, as we move forward, we need to get it more. How different Boise State's offense was without Southwood? You know, actually, you know, better runner. Well, they, they, you know, the scheme part is, I mean, formation shifts, play action, quick game, shots. Uh, I think this guy's, he, he's more of a weapon as, as on his feet as a runner. Um, obviously doesn't have the amount of snaps, you know, from a uh, experience standpoint, which the only way you get that is playing, right? So um, I don't think it changes much. I mean, look, that running back, I mean, I'm glad I'm not tackling the son of a gun. I mean, that guy's a real guy now and a big guy. So. Are we going to wrap up like we did against San Jose? We're still trying. We're still wrapping. His interception was to Hansley. Yeah, it was to Hansley this week. Yeah, but the one so right. just catch that Crockett had. Right. Yeah, and and really that one was uh, he stepped up and didn't deliver on time. He got pressured from the backside, and he shuffled too far instead of set ball going. Um, Crockett was good out of the break. Now to answer your question, um, if he is, he's wrong. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't see it that way, but. Right now, he might be hanging on the primary when they're the primary too long, is maybe a good way to put it. Uh, I thought he missed Kevon on the wheel. You know, I mean, he had a guy trailing him, just throw it to the guy, right? That's all you got to do, just to throw it, you know? Um, you know, I think you probably go back to the one the game before. If he puts the ball higher, it's a six foot five or six foot six inch target. That's what you want, and you teach in the red area. You, you teach end line, hairline, okay, goal line, waistline. You know, I mean, that's how you want to locate the balls. And he obviously didn't put that one where he needed to. Um, but I, you know, I don't know. I'd have to go back and really look at it if he's sitting there. If he is, he's wrong. I hope he hears this. Then, based on that. <laughs> Go back to the, their running back. What makes him so good? Well, he, he, first of all, and you hear me say it, 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 the key is running behind your pads. Makes you really hard to tackle. All right? And he's a hard guy to tackle. And the way he keeps his legs moving, you know, and they don't die on contact, you know, that's one of the things that drives me nuts about running backs is when they get into traffic, their legs die. They don't die, and then that unique with with enough juice to to finish. Um, he's a complete package. Going back to the Hawaii game, your offense ran in the second half. Kind of. Is the one I know you didn't score points, but was the one saving grace is you were able to at least control the ball. I think you had that ten minute time. We did at least. We was and that your saving we grace and we got some half? first downs. Yeah. Um, just not, you know, I give them credit now. Um, they knocked us off the ball. I mean, there were times we're handing the ball off and they're in the backfield. And we kind of went back. I thought we reverted a little bit from the front to doing the horizontal step stuff and trying to position rather than get your second foot in the ground and go forward. I thought we reverted back to some of that. I, I honestly did. And uh, that's disappointing. Was that bad down? 
I, you know, I might have been some bad. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody did say how good the pineapple was, though, at, at dinner. I don't, that might have been, you know. Now, I'm sure there's still some consistency issues, but is this the offense? Now, we, we kind of asked you this throughout the season. The last three wins, you've had 250 yards rushing, 291, 231. Is this the offense that you expect or you want where your quarterback is kind of more managing the game and he's running the ball while he's controlling the clock and controlling, keeping your... Yeah, y- you know, what I want in a perfect world is I want it to be balanced. I don't want a team to be able to say, if we take away the run, we got them. If we take away the pass, we got them. Uh, I just believe in balance. Call me crazy, all right? It's a novel concept. I think when you break down the consistent winning teams, there's, there's always an anomaly in there where some team is throwing for a whole bunch or they're an option team, right, that just does nothing. But when you look consistently as to those top programs, I bet you offensively they're pretty balanced. They can run it and they can pass it. And so to me, if you're going to have 500 yards of offense, it should be 250 and 250. Now you're taking the guessing game. You know, the defense says, oh, geez, what are they? Well, I got to stop. No, I stopped this. Now they do that, right? Um, I don't know. I, I just, that that's, that, and, and we're getting decent balance, I, I think. And in some games, guys, if you're having to throw it to get 400 yards of throwing, chances are you're getting beat. <laughs> you know, you're. You're playing catch up, right? So, I think when you look at it, I, 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 and I don't know this, somebody else have to break it down. I'm guessing we probably have more air production in the first half and balance it out in the second half. So, what you're trying to do is wear them out by pass rushing and then pound it on them there in the fourth quarter, right? You know, I don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah, there was. Where Jared had somebody already there, and you could tell you were trying to run a screen, but yeah. they just had to throw it away to avoid a sack. Yeah, I think, I think that there and was at least two of those really yeah. jumped out at me. Yeah, I think you're right, and he had to throw it in the feet of the guys. So right, yeah. You don't want to crock yeah. his feet where they wanted the flag, obviously. And sure. Um, yeah, but you know. There was another one that it seemed like it was kind of that. Probably one the one to Hansley. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, uh, I mean, how do you, is that just? I don't know. Guys completely missing? Or are they supposed to at least kind of slow down? Yeah, that, that's, that's, a, a that's a good thing to kind of bump the guy on the screen. And, yeah. and yet you you don't want to impede their progress. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I I don't know that, you know. I mean, is that one of those detail type things, though? That yeah, it was. I mean, the one. Details that weren't, it, weren't working. The that one, you know, and you sniff out. We sniffed out three of their screens. Right. You know, and part of that is the guy reading the guy leaving, and then, right. you know, uh, tell you on the on the greatest or the best play of that whole deal was Lorian King. They were running on on the fumble that Max picked up. They were running tight end middle screen. Tight end was off. Well, Lorian smelled. We got pressure. Lorian smelled the rat, and the guy couldn't pull the trigger to him. And then that's when. Uh, Corey got the sack fumble. So, um, you know, screens are, man, those are hit or miss, man. I mean, so I, I don't know. You know, I, I hope so. You know, I hope they are. Um, yet, like I've always said, I've got to give the people a reason to come. We're playing a, a meaningful game in November that obviously a hometown, home, home stadium crowd can help, right? Uh, I'm not sure I've given them enough to come yet. But I do know how hard our guys are playing, and we're putting ourselves in a position now 
where late season games are becoming relevant. And, uh, you know, they got a chance to come watch a pretty good opponent. And, you know, the Rams have something to play for. And now, if they get to the bottom of the tunnel and look at it as the woodshed for the last couple times that they've just gotten throttled and run back out, I may go out to the stadium and tell everyone to go home. Jim, uh, Boise has three losses and they've had some injuries. Mm -hmm. They look like Boise on film. They still do. They, it, it's still, they're really good on special teams. You know, they're, they're, and I'm nervous about that because we were not good on special teams this last game. And we can't let that be a, something that um, I think they're young. Um, and, and guys, I'm telling you now, it's hard to sustain. I mean, what they have done is, is that's hard, man. Yeah, I mean, that's hard. Yeah, I, you know, but as I say that, you know, this is tailor-made for coaching 101 to get your squad ready to come in here and kick our tails. <laughs> does that not work in the reverse for you, though? Tailor-made for you. You're coming off your first winning streak, two straight road wins. They're playing for something that this program has not played for in God knows how long. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, you know, they've never been there, so I don't know. I, I, I hope they've learned that preparation – and what you do in practice has a direct correlation to the outcome of the game and that you don't um, – look, nothing's handed to you. And it really is going to come down to how we play. And uh, we move from there. Um, you know, if you make this big hype about it, well, it should be exciting. Why? Because it's the next game, <laughs> right? And uh, th that's got to be how – that's how great programs – that's the mentality. But I think what you're getting at is if this is a big game, if you win this one, the next one becomes even bigger. This program hasn't been there. That's what you want them to experience, right? I do. And I want them to experience that, that this should mean something in how you prepare. Okay? Thanks, guys.